This week I'm teaching on the old man is dead. This is only my third day into this teaching and I've already said things that are just radical. Radical, radical. I would, I would dare to say that 95% or more of the body of Christ does not understand the things that I'm saying and not only doesn't understand it, but they would actually teach against it. And yet I'm taking this straight out of Scripture. And I, there's no way I can go back and cover everything that I've done. Let me just say that this is a new teaching. It's not... I've mentioned it. I've taught on this before. Matter of fact, I wrote this book and this are... Uh, this is my footnotes from the book of Romans compiled into a written, printed form. And uh, there's over 400 pages. And so all of these truths that I'm talking about from Romans 6, 7, and 8 are in this book, but in some way they're kind of buried in there. And the Lord just woke me up early in the morning and said, I need to just teach on being the old man being dead and put it uh, as a standalone teaching. Of course, it complements all of the other grace teaching, but people need to get hold of this truth. And um, so that's what I've been doing the last couple of days. And I've already covered so much material that um, there's just no way I can go back and say all of those things over again. Please go to our website. You can look at the archived copies. And like I said, we've got a brand new teaching that's coming out on this entitled, The Old Man is Dead. Please get the materials because this is just... It's uh, so different than the way most people think that you have to let this just soak in. Personally, I didn't get this all at once. It's not like I just read these verses and boom, I got it. I read these verses and it raised so many questions and I, I just had to spend time going through this and answering these questions. And as I meditated on it, it became clearer and clearer. And now this is one of the truths that is just foundational in my life. So in Romans 6, 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Absolutely not. That is not what he's saying. Here's the reason that a Christian, once you get born again, here's the reason that you don't live in sin. It's not so that you can earn God's love, favor, answer to prayer, etc. He loves you because He is love and not because you are lovely. And He answers your prayer because you pray in the name of Jesus. So your actions, your performance doesn't affect God. If you live holy, He's not more prone to move in your life. And if you live unholy, He's not less prone to move in your life. God's love for you is unconditional. And so that raises the question, can we just live in sin? God forbid. Why not? Because you are dead to sin. And man, if I had time, over in Romans chapter 5, it talks about by one man sin entered into the world and death came upon all men because all have sinned. It says by one man sin entered into the world. Did you know it's not your individual sins that made you a sinner? It was your sin nature that made you sin. And this is what it says over in Ephesians chapter 2, that we were all dead in trespasses and sins and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. When you were born, you were born with a sin nature. And the reason people sin is because it is their nature to sin. But when you get born again, that sin nature is taken out of you. You die to that sin nature. This is what this is saying. When it says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? This is not saying that a Christian cannot commit an act of sin, but you are dead to that old sin nature. The old sin nature is gone. In the next verse, it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. Did you know the word baptized here? Most people only identify baptism as water baptism, a rite that you go through once you get born again. You, you are put under the water or some denomination sprinkle, which I'm not here to teach on baptism, but the word baptize means to immerse or submerge. And there's no way that sprinkling can immerse or submerge you. So the only biblical way 
to have the um, ordinance of baptism is to dunk them and hold them under. But I'm not going to gripe or complain over that, whether you dunk them or sprinkle them or if you just hold them under until they really repent. Amen. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But this isn't talking about water baptism. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about that by one Spirit, we are all baptized into the body of Christ. And Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 2, it says there are doctrines of baptisms, plural. So there's not only water baptism, which you do as a symbol or as a sign of salvation, but then you are baptized into the body of Christ, and then Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So there's multiple baptisms. What this is talking about in verse 3, it says, Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. This isn't talking about water baptism. Water baptism is a picture of this. But this is talking about when a person repents of their sins and receives Jesus as their salvation, immediately, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says, you are baptized into Christ, into His death. And so this is saying that when you got born again, you were taken and your old man died with Christ. You know, this is not symbolic. This is literal. It happened. Because we can't see it, because we can't feel it, a lot of people think that this is just symbolic. It's only in principle, and when we go to heaven, then all these things happen. But no, when you get born again, this is the reason Jesus said in John chapter 3, you must be born again. That word again literally means born from heaven. You were born physically, and through that physical birth, you received a sinful nature. This is what David spoke about in Psalms chapter 51 when he said, in sin did my mother conceive me. That's not talking about that she was in a sinful relationship and that it was outside of marriage or something like that. It's just saying that all of us were born with this nature that was separated from God. Man, there's just so many things I'm saying here that it's hard to say because most, you know, I'm trying to communicate and words to most people, religion has... Uh, you know, hijack these words, and they, they mean different things to different people. It's just like our liberal, woke crowd today, and they'll call it an equality act that they're trying to pass. And it's anything but equality. It's letting men compete in women's sports. That's unequal. But they have hijacked these words. They've hijacked things like the rainbow, which is a symbol. You know, in Ezekiel, the rainbow is the glory that surrounds the throne of God. Ezekiel saw it. And in heaven, there is a rainbow. It's the glory of God over His throne. And the Lord said that He put His bow in the cloud as a promise to us that He would never again destroy the earth with a flood. And yet the homosexual community has hijacked that and made it some kind of a symbol of, of uh, something that's an abomination to God. The devil is just a master at confusing things. And so I'm running into these same things when I'm trying to communicate here that we are dead to sin. The word dead to most people means that it doesn't exist that, you, you know, when a person dies, they just cease to exist. They're gone. Well, that's never what the Bible means. When Adam and Eve sinned, the Lord said in Genesis chapter 2, He says, In the day you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. If you look that up in the Hebrew, did you know what it says is you shall die, die. It just emphasized the word twice to make sure that it was absolute. In the day you eat of the fruit. Did you know that Adam lived 930 years after his transgression against God and eating of that fruit? So he didn't die physically in his body that day, but he did die. What died? It's not that his spirit ceased to exist, but it was separate from God. That's what the word death literally means. And yet most people think that death means ceasing to exist that it's just gone, it doesn't exist anymore. When a person dies, that's it, it's over. 
THERE IS NO SUCH THING AS SOMETHING CEASING TO EXIST. GOD CREATED US. AND, YOU KNOW, I'VE EVEN READ A FEW THINGS. I'M NOT GOING TO GET INTO THIS MUCH, BUT THERE ARE PEOPLE THAT BELIEVE THAT NO ENERGY EVER CEASES TO EXIST. IT JUST CHANGES FORMS AND DOES THINGS. YOUR BODY, IT MAY DECAY, BUT IT STILL EXISTS, AND SOMEDAY GOD IS GOING TO RECONSTITUTE IT AND PUT IT BACK TOGETHER. BUT YOUR SPIRIT MAN, THE PART OF YOU THAT GOD BREATHED INTO MAN THE BREATH OF LIFE, AND THEY BECAME A LIVING SOUL, IT DIDN'T DIE IN THE SENSE THAT IT CEASED TO EXIST OR QUIT FUNCTIONING. IT JUST MEANS THAT ALL OF A SUDDEN IT WAS SEPARATE FROM GOD. IT WAS NO LONGER UNDER THE CONTROL AND THE DIRECTION OF GOD, AND WE STARTED LIVING OUR LIFE SEPARATE FROM GOD. AND, OF COURSE, SATAN CAME IN AND BEGAN TO FILL THE VOID AND BEGAN TO EDUCATE US. AND uh, SO WHEN WE SAY THAT WE HAD A SPIRIT THAT WAS DEAD, SEPARATED FROM GOD, IT DOESN'T MEAN THAT IT WASN'T FUNCTIONAL. IT WAS FUNCTIONAL. IT WAS YOUR NATURE. IT WAS THAT OLD MAN THAT COMPELLED YOU TO LIVE IN SIN. IT'S NOT THE INDIVIDUAL SINS THAT YOU COMMITTED THAT WAS THE PROBLEM. IT WAS THAT NATURE THAT COMPELLED YOU TO SIN THAT WAS REALLY THE REAL YOU. GOD CREATED ADAM AND EVE'S BODY OUT OF THE DUST OF THE GROUND, TOOK EVE'S BODY OUT OF ADAM, BUT THEN HE BREATHED INTO MAN THE BREATH OF LIFE, AND MAN BECAME A LIVING SOUL. AND IF YOU PUT THAT TOGETHER WITH JAMES CHAPTER 2, VERSE 26, IT SAYS, AS THE BODY WITHOUT THE SPIRIT IS DEAD, SO FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD ALSO. SO THAT SHOWS YOU THAT THE SPIRIT IS THE LIFE-GIVING PART. THE SPIRIT IS WHERE LIFE CAME FROM. ADAM HAD A BODY, BUT HE DIDN'T HAVE ANY LIFE IN HIM UNTIL GOD PUT LIFE IN HIM. THE SPIRIT IS THE LIFE-GIVING PART. BUT WHEN MAN SINNED, THAT SPIRIT DIED. IT DIDN'T CEASE TO EXIST. IT DIDN'T CEASE TO FUNCTION. IT JUST BECAME SEPARATED FROM GOD. AND ON OUR OWN, WE BEGAN TO START SPEWING OUT THINGS. AND, OF COURSE, SATAN CAME IN AND PRAYED ON THAT. SATAN IS A SPIRIT, AND SATAN BEGAN TO INFLUENCE OUR FALLEN HUMAN NATURE. AND THE REASON PEOPLE COMMIT ACTS OF SIN IS BECAUSE OF THEIR SINFUL NATURE. BUT ALL OF THESE VERSES ARE SAYING THAT WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, YOU ARE BAPTIZED INTO HIS DEATH. That, THAT SINFUL NATURE THAT YOU HAD PRIOR TO SALVATION, when, WHEN YOU MADE JESUS YOUR LORD, THAT SINFUL NATURE WAS PUT INTO JESUS. YOU DIED WITH HIM, AND THAT SINFUL NATURE HAS NOW BEEN TAKEN OUT OF YOU. IT IS, YOU ARE DEAD TO IT. YOU ARE SEPARATED FROM IT. YOUR OLD MAN IS GONE. WHEN I GET INTO CHAPTER 7, MAN, IT MAKES A GREAT ANALOGY AND MAKES THIS POINT EVEN STRONGER. BUT YOUR SINFUL NATURE IS NOW GONE. AND THAT'S WHAT THIS IS TALKING ABOUT. IT SAYS, KNOW YE NOT THAT SO MANY OF US AS WERE BAPTIZED INTO JESUS CHRIST WERE BAPTIZED INTO HIS DEATH. SO WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, YOU'RE IMMEDIATELY BAPTIZED INTO JESUS, AND THAT MEANS THAT THAT SINFUL NATURE WAS TAKEN OUT OF YOU PLACED IN JESUS. IT SUFFERED THE WRATH OF GOD. IT WAS PUNISHED, AND IT IS GONE. IT IS SEPARATE. It, YOU DO NOT HAVE A SINFUL NATURE IN YOU ANYMORE. YOU KNOW, A GOOD FRIEND OF MINE, um, DUANE SHERIFF, HE'S ON MY BOARD OF DIRECTORS, AND he, HE PASTORS ONE CHURCH, BUT IN MANY DIFFERENT LOCATIONS AROUND THE WORLD. AND DUANE, WHEN HE GOT BORN AGAIN, HE, he ACTUALLY HAD A DESIRE FOR GOD AND WANTED TO GO INTO THE MINISTRY EVEN WHEN HE WAS A LITTLE KID, BUT NOBODY AROUND HIM KNEW HOW TO HELP HIM DO THIS. AND THEN HIS BROTHER DIED AND HE GOT MAD AT GOD AND HE WOUND UP LIVING IN SIN AND FEELING LIKE HE HAD JUST DONE SO MUCH WRONG THAT GOD COULD NEVER FORGIVE HIM. AND ANYWAY, HIS PRESENT WIFE, NOW SUE, THEY WEREN'T MARRIED AT THE TIME, SHE GOT TO WITNESS INTO HIM AND AS SHE TOLD HIM ABOUT THE GOODNESS OF GOD, AND AS HE JUST KEPT SAYING, NO, GOD COULD NEVER FORGIVE ME, AND SHE JUST KEPT COMING BACK THAT IT'S NOT ACCORDING TO YOUR SINS, IT'S ACCORDING TO JESUS. Dwayne HAD AN OPEN VISION, AND HE LITERALLY SAW JESUS DYING ON THE CROSS FOR HIS SINS. AND THROUGH THAT, HE GOT A REVELATION OF THE LOVE OF GOD. AND IN THAT VISION, HE ALSO SAW HIMSELF IN JESUS. AND HE SAW HIMSELF DYING TO THOSE SINS, DYING WITH CHRIST. 
AND IT JUST TRANSFORMED HIS LIFE. AND I'VE HELD MEETINGS WITH DUANE NUMEROUS TIMES. YOU KNOW, YOU, you NEED TO GO CHECK HIM OUT IF YOU DON'T KNOW ABOUT DUANE SHERIFF. IN MY ESTIMATION, HE'S ONE OF THE BEST MINISTERS ON THE PLANET TODAY. AND THIS IS ONE OF THE STRONG POINTS OF DUANE AND ME BOTH, IS THAT WE BOTH KNOW THAT WE DIED IN CHRIST. THAT SINFUL NATURE THAT COMPELLED ME TO LIVE IN SIN IS DEAD AND GONE. IT DOESN'T EXIST. IT'S DEAD. IT'S SEPARATED FROM ME. IT DOESN'T EXIST INSIDE OF ME. GOD TOOK IT IN CHRIST AND PUT IT TO DEATH. THAT'S WHAT THIS IS SAYING. SO AGAIN, WHY DO WE LIVE HOLY? CAN WE JUST GO LIVE IN SIN BECAUSE GOD'S LOVE IS UNCONDITIONAL? GOD FORBID. NO. HERE'S THE REASON IS BECAUSE WE ARE DEAD TO SIN, TO THAT SIN NATURE. THAT SIN NATURE WAS CRUCIFIED IN CHRIST. WHEN WE GOT BORN AGAIN, WE WERE BAPTIZED INTO CHRIST'S DEATH, AND THAT SINFUL NATURE IS GONE. SO THE NUMBER ONE REASON THAT CHRISTIANS DON'T LIVE IN SIN IS BECAUSE IT'S NOT THEIR NATURE TO LIVE IN SIN. YOUR NATURE HAS BEEN CHANGED. AND IF YOU UNDERSTOOD THIS, IT WOULD CHANGE YOUR ACTIONS. AGAIN, I REFER TO PROVERBS 23, 7, AS A MAN THINKS IN HIS HEART, SO IS HE. AND IF YOU THINK, WELL, I, I'M FORGIVEN, I'M SAVED, BUT I'VE STILL GOT THIS OLD SINFUL NATURE, IF YOU THINK THAT'S WHO YOU ARE AT YOUR CORE, YOU MAY RESIST TO A DEGREE, AND YOU MIGHT BE ABLE TO MODIFY YOUR BEHAVIOR TO A DEGREE, BUT at, IN RESULT, YOU'RE GOING TO WIND UP LIVING IN SIN BECAUSE THAT'S WHO YOU THINK YOU ARE. BUT WHEN YOU SEE THAT, NO, I'M NOT THAT PERSON ANYMORE. I'M A BRAND NEW PERSON. AND IF YOU COULD EVER SEE YOURSELF THAT WAY, IT'LL BECOME A SELF-FULFILLING PROPHECY. AS YOU SEE YOURSELF, THAT'S THE WAY YOU'RE GOING TO ACT. IF YOU COULD SEE YOURSELF FORGIVEN AND CLEANSED AND AS HOLY AND PURE AS JESUS IS, IF YOU COULD HONESTLY BELIEVE THAT THAT IS YOUR NATURE, YOU WOULD WIND UP LIVING HOLIER ACCIDENTALLY THAN YOU EVER HAVE ON PURPOSE BEFORE, BECAUSE THAT WOULD BE THE WAY YOU SEE YOURSELF. SO THAT'S WHAT THESE VERSES ARE SAYING. WHEN WE GOT BORN AGAIN, WE WERE BAPTIZED INTO CHRIST AND EXPERIENCED HIS DEATH. IN VERSE 4, IT SAYS, THEREFORE, WE ARE BURIED WITH HIM BY BAPTISM INTO DEATH, THAT LIKE AS CHRIST WAS RAISED UP FROM THE DEAD BY THE GLORY OF THE FATHER, EVEN SO WE ALSO SHOULD WALK IN NEWNESS OF LIFE. IN THIS VERSE 4, IT SAYS THE BAPTISM INTO CHRIST AND BEING BURIED WITH HIM, DEAD TO THE OLD MAN, IS AN ACCOMPLISHED THING. BUT THEN IT SAYS WE SHOULD WALK IN NEWNESS OF LIFE. IN OTHER WORDS, OUR DEATH, THIS OLD NATURE, WHEN YOU GET BORN AGAIN, GOD TOOK THE SINFUL NATURE OUT OF YOU. YOUR OLD MAN IS DEAD. IT IS GONE. IT IS NOT DRIVING YOU ANYMORE. THAT'S AUTOMATIC. IF YOU TRULY MADE JESUS YOUR LORD, YOU WERE BORN FROM ABOVE, AND THAT FIRST BIRTH IS OVER, AND YOU NOW HAVE A NEW NATURE. BUT WHETHER YOU WALK IN NEWNESS OF LIFE IS DEPENDENT UPON YOU KNOWING SOME THINGS. NOTICE THAT THE DEATH WITH CHRIST IS ACCOMPLISHED, BUT THE RESURRECTION WITH CHRIST IS DEPENDENT UPON US uh, DOING SOME THINGS. WE SHOULD WALK IN NEWNESS OF LIFE, BUT IF YOU DON'T KNOW THE TRUTH, THEN YOU CAN'T BE SET FREE BY IT. JESUS SAID IN JOHN CHAPTER 8, VERSE 32, YOU SHALL KNOW THE TRUTH, AND THE TRUTH SHALL MAKE YOU FREE. BUT IT'S ONLY THE TRUTH YOU KNOW THAT MAKES YOU FREE. AND SAD TO SAY, MOST CHRISTIANS DON'T KNOW THIS. AND SO IN VERSE 5, IT SAYS, FOR IF WE HAVE BEEN PLANTED TOGETHER IN THE LIKENESS OF HIS DEATH, THAT IS TRUE BASED ON THESE PREVIOUS VERSES, WE SHALL BE ALSO IN THE LIKENESS OF HIS RESURRECTION, KNOWING THIS. NOTICE THOSE TWO WORDS IN VERSE 6. IN OTHER WORDS, VERSE 5 IS NOT A SENTENCE BY ITSELF. AND IT'S WRONG FOR YOU TO JUST MAKE A STATEMENT HERE IN VERSE 5 THAT WE'VE BEEN PLANTED TOGETHER IN THE LIKENESS OF HIS DEATH, AND WE SHALL BE ALSO IN THE res LIKENESS OF HIS RESURRECTION, PERIOD. IT WOULD BE WRONG TO DO THAT. IT'S DEPENDENT UPON YOU KNOWING THIS. WHAT IS IT THAT YOU HAVE TO KNOW THAT MAKES THIS RESURRECTION LIFE FUNCTION IN YOU? HERE IT IS. YOU HAVE TO KNOW THIS, THAT OUR OLD MAN IS CRUCIFIED WITH HIM, THAT THE BODY MIGHT BE DESTROYED, THAT HENCEFORTH WE SHOULD NOT SERVE SIN. SO THIS SAYS THAT YOUR EXPERIENCE OF RESURRECTION LIFE IS DEPENDENT UPON YOU KNOWING SOMETHING, SPECIFICALLY KNOWING THAT YOUR OLD MAN IS DEAD. 
AND AGAIN, THE VAST MAJORITY OF CHRISTIANS DO NOT BELIEVE THAT THEIR OLD MAN IS DEAD, OR SOME PEOPLE WHO ARE AWARE OF THE TERMINOLOGY WILL BELIEVE THAT it, IT'S DEAD, BUT IT RESURRECTS EVERY MORNING. YOU KNOW, I WAS RAISED IN A CHURCH THAT ACTUALLY TAUGHT THAT YOU HAD A SIN NATURE, AND THEY TAUGHT THAT WHEN YOU GOT BORN AGAIN, YOU RECEIVED A NEW NATURE. NOW, THEY DIDN'T EXPLAIN IT, AND I CERTAINLY DIDN'T HAVE A GREAT REVELATION OF THAT, BUT I WOULD HAVE ACCEPTED THE TERMINOLOGY IF YOU WOULD HAVE SAID, ARE YOU BORN AGAIN? DO YOU HAVE A NEW NATURE? I WOULD HAVE SAID YES. BUT I BELIEVE I HAD THE OLD NATURE STILL ON THE INSIDE OF ME, THAT I WAS DUAL NATURE, THAT I WAS SCHIZOPHRENIC. AND ANYWAY, THEY TAUGHT THAT THIS OLD NATURE WAS DOMINANT, AND WHAT YOU HAD TO DO WAS DIE TO THIS OLD NATURE EVERY DAY. AND I KNOW SOME OF YOU ARE GOING TO THINK I'M MAKING THIS UP, BUT, MAN, I WAS RELIGION, RELIGIOUS. Re RELIGION WILL MESS YOU UP. AND BECAUSE OF THAT TEACHING, I PHYSICALLY USED TO GET UP, AND I WOULD SIT IN A CHAIR WITH ARMS ON IT LIKE THIS, AND I COULD JUST IMAGINE MYSELF BEING IN AN ELECTRIC CHAIR, AND I WOULD STRAP MYSELF IN, IN MY MIND, AND SEE MYSELF DYING TO MY SINS, AND I WOULD MENTION ANY SINS THAT I'D COMMITTED OR JUST SINS IN GENERAL, AND I WOULD GO AND re NAME ALL OF MY SINS AND DIE TO THAT OLD MAN. THAT IS NOT WHAT THE WORD OF GOD TEACHES. THE BIBLE TEACHES DYING TO YOURSELF ONE TIME, AND AFTER THAT, JUST RECKONING THAT IT WAS DONE. I'M JUST ABOUT OUT OF TIME TODAY. I OPENED UP A CAN OF WORMS. I KNOW THAT SOME OF YOU ARE THINKING, oh, THIS IS CRAZY. MAN, JOIN ME AGAIN TOMORROW AS I CONTINUE TO EXPLAIN THIS OR GET MY TEACHING, THIS BRAND NEW TEACHING ENTITLED, THE OLD MAN IS DEAD. YOU CAN ALSO GET THIS TEACHING IN THIS 400-PLUS PAGE BOOK WHERE I TEACH VERSE BY VERSE THROUGH THE BOOK OF ROMANS. AND THEN WE ALSO ARE OFFERING OUR LIVING COMMENTARY, WHICH IS A DIGITAL COMMENTARY, AND I'VE WRITTEN FOOTNOTES ON OVER 26,000 OF THE 31,000 VERSES IN THE BIBLE.